Mat 43, I had a question coming out of the Chapter 7 Deep Dive, number 2. And here was the one where we were looking at baseball games. And I, I can see from this histogram, here's my variable down here on the x-axis, right? Run scored per game by the home team. So I just decided to write that out. I always start with what is the variable. And in terms of that variable, if I go to my flow chart and start going along this flow chart, right, I, I found my variable. It's numerical. All right, I would count the number of runs scored in any baseball game. Um, there wasn't any information about we're going to play seven games and count the number of runs or something to like that, something like that. So this is not a binomial distribution. This is a table problem, and the table was actually given. You might not have recognized the table, but we've done a couple of these before. So let me just show you the beginnings of a table. I don't want to draw the whole thing out because we actually have the table written there in the histogram. All right, my variables down here on the x-axis, right? I see it goes 0 to 10, right? And again, I'm not going to write the entire thing out, but that would be my sample space. And we've got relative frequency along the y-axis, and that's another phrase for probability. So I see if I score zero runs, well, there's about a 5% chance of that happening, right? One run, there's about a 10% chance of that happening, right? And so on and so forth. I could go all the way over here to 10 runs. There's about a 3% chance of that happening, right? And so we've talked many times about how all of those probabilities would need to total out to one. Now I'm gonna erase all that because I don't need all of this junked up. I want it to be clean as we work through this problem, but this is a table problem. Table was given in the form of a histogram and it says calculate the mean, median, and standard deviation. Use proper units. So if I go back to that flow chart, I'm over in this column. Oops, let me put the pen on, right? And if I want the mean and standard deviation, we're gonna do one bar stats L1, L2. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go back to my, let me head over to my calculator. I put my data into my list, so you can see it there. And I'm gonna do one var stats, L1, L2. And let's see what we're getting. It looks like the mean is 4.27, the standard deviation is about 2.56, and the median is over there at four. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those three statistics and put them on my answer. So I have that the mean is 4.27. The standard deviation was, I think it was 2.56 if I remember. And then the median was four. Now I say use proper units because what is my variable? Well, it's runs scored. So on average, the home team scores 4.27 runs. When they deviate by from that 4.27, they deviate by about 2.56 runs. And the median is four runs. All right. Now, between the mean and median, which one was greater? Well, you can see over here, and I'll change pen colors, that the mean was greater. That was a larger number. All right, so the mean was greater. And why does this make sense? Well, this goes back to chapter two. If you look at this graph, if I were going to socks this graph, right, the first S would be shape, and you would tell me this graph was skewed right. And whenever a graph is skewed right, the mean is greater than the median. So the mean was greater than the median, right? And this is consistent with a skewed right distribution. All right, so we got that. And then as we move to C, it says, what's the probability that in four selected, four randomly selected games, the home team is shut out in at least one of the games? All right, so here we've got a new variable. All right, so our new variable here is we've got these four games we're looking at, and now we're looking at how many times is the home team shut out. So imagine if you played four games, right? So if I'm going to keep track in our variable changes, right, it's the number of times the home team is shut out. So, or I could say number of games home team is shut out. All right, so we're not talking about runs anymore because you can see that when they say shut out, they're actually saying your runs are zero. Right, so we're not talking about this, this distribution up here anymore because the variables change. Now it's saying, like, if we play four games, what's the likelihood you're going to be shut out? Well, whoops, excuse me. 
Let me go back through this flow chart and let's let's play this out again for our new problem, all right? So I've read my problem. I know it's a new variable, variable, right? Number of times the home team shut out. It's discrete. Now, was this a table or a binomial? Well, this is a different problem in that they did give us a fixed number of observations, right? We're going to play four games. So I'm going to question whether it's binomial. And if it's not, and it might not be, I might not meet those four properties, then there's some sort of table that I have, I, I must create, right? So it's either, it's these two paths. Let me get my red highlighter up. It's either that I'm on this path here where I wind up making the table or it's binomial, all right? So I'm not sure which. I will figure that out um, in a moment, all right? But that those are our two options. So let's go through the binomial properties and see if we meet them. All right, so if I'm going binomial, all right, the first thing I need to do is have a fixed number of observations. I do. The next thing I need to keep track of is do I have a success? And we're keeping track of the number of times a home team is shut out. So here, a success is home team is shut out. All right, I'm going to pick four games at random so I can assume that the trials are independent. And in terms of what is the probability that a home team is shut out, well, again, home team being shut out means that you score zero runs. And if we look at that probability, it's right up there. It's 0.05. All right, scoring zero runs happens 5% of the time. So sure enough, I do have a binomial distribution. So my variable here is binomially distributed, 4 comma 0.05. And now let's break down this probability phrase. All right, so I got probability, and it says at least one of the games. All right, so probability statement, here we go, probability. And I, like always, I need letter, symbol. Well, that is a terrible way to write symbol. Symbol, number. All right, so my letter is going to be X. That's my variable. But we've got to unpack at least one. At least one game. And let me kind of write it off on the margin here if I can. Oh, there we go. At least one. That's like saying one or more. All right, so I need a greater than or equal to symbol. So I need x for my letter, greater than or equal to for my symbol, and 1 here. So I want the probability, oops, here we go, that x is greater than or equal to 1. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Now, if I need to calculate a probability, let's go back to this flow chart. We're now on the binomial distribution, and it says if you want to calculate a probability, either use binomial PDF or CDF, I have a greater than or equal to situation, so I need to use the complement rule because my calculator is only built in on down mode. So here we go. All right, if I want to use the binom or binomial CDF with the complement rule, I'm going to do 1 minus binomial CDF. All right, so we know we're going to have 4 and 0.05, but we have to figure out what that number is. That's always the, the trick in this. So imagine if I was going to make a table, and I'm not... I'm not going to actually make it, but I want to draw the beginnings of it. If I was going to make a table for this problem, right, I could get shut out in zero games, one game, two games, three games, or four games. And I want x to be greater than or equal to 1. Right, so let's figure out what we want to include and what we, what we want to exclude. So if I want greater than or equal to 1, I do not want 0. I do want 1. I do want 2. I do want 3. And I do want 4. All right, so I want 1 on up, which means I do not want 0 on down. So that's what I'm going to wind up putting in that third position, because the only one I want to get rid of is the 0. All right, so let me put this back in. I'm going to put 0 here. And because it's 0 and there happens to only be one number here, you actually could have put binomial PDF as well. It doesn't matter which option. The PDF and the CDF happen to be the same. Because if you're accumulating at zero, there's nothing on down after zero. All right, so I'm going to erase all this, and then let's go put this in our calculator, and we'll see what we've got going on here. Okay, let me get that out. Okay, so we're going to head over here, and we are going to clear this out. One minus binomial, and I'll go PDF just, just because I can, for 0.05 and zero. And then we're getting about 0.185. So let me go ahead and put that, oops, wrong thing, sorry. <laughs> let me go ahead and put that over here. All right, so we got that happening. Okay, 
So last but not least, right, now we're going to play 200 games and look at the average number of runs, right? Average number of runs. And that relates back up to this thing. We're back down to runs scored per game. So it says describe the sampling distribution. Okay, so here we go. X bar, right? We've got our three question marks. And let's see how we're going to do with this. Now, my population mean, if I go back, right, if I go back, we had said my, my mean up here was 4.27. So that's going to trickle down to the sampling distribution. All right, so let me, oops, hold on, I must have, yeah, there we go. Let me up that. So this is going to be 4.27. The standard error will always be the population standard deviation, which was 2.56 divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 200 in this case. And if I were to crunch that number on my calculator, it's gonna be pretty small. It's gonna be, oops, where's my, there we go. It's gonna be 0 0.181. And then the big question mark, because it always comes in, is can I put the normal distribution there? Well, if we go back up to our properties, right, we have two ways to get normality. Either the population distribution was stated as normal or the CLT kicks in. Well, let's take a look. Our population distribution right here, it's not normal, right? We said, if anything, it's skewed right. So I, I don't have the first assumption met because here is my population distribution right here. It was just given to us. All right, so for this particular problem, that assumption's not met, but was my sample size at least 30? And in this case, I was doing 200 games, right? And looking at the average number of runs scored, and that is enough for the central limit theorem to kick in. So here comes the distribution. I get to put the, the capital N there and call it a day. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. There's number two. Take care. Bye.